Hi everyone, it's Dr. Bishop here to give a short video on understanding systematic reviews and meta-analysis. In this video, we're going to lay out the framework for going through the three stages of appraising a systematic review and a meta-analysis. Before we start looking specifically at a case in an article, I'd like to go over the difference between a narrative review and a systematic review. Reviews are great in general because they synthesize information so that as a busy doctor, you don't have to read every article on a topic. A narrative review is a comprehensive discussion about a disease and may include sections on the etiology, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis of a disease. But these types of reviews are helpful to give you a comprehensive information about a disease. But nar narrative reviews do not have standardized methods, particularly when it comes to searching the literature, assessing the quality of the literature, and summarizing the results. A systematic review is different. The authors of a systematic review use standard methods to identify re relevant articles, assess the quality of those articles, and report pool's results. Over the next few videos, we'll go over the methods of a systematic review and meta-analysis, and we'll learn how to interpret the results. There are five steps to a strong systematic review. First, we have to define a clinical question. Next, we have to do a comprehensive literature search. Then we have to include articles according to agreed upon criteria. Then we abstract data from those articles and analyze the data. Let's start with a case. You are a second year student who is seeing patients at the student run clinic. Your first patient is a 42 year old woman who has not seen a doctor for three years because she did not have health insurance. She's really in for just a checkup and wants to get the routine screening that's recommended for her age group. She asks you about mammograms and asks whether you recommend them. You decide to look up the recommendation by the U.S. Preventative Task Force, and when you go to their website, you find the following recommendation. For women before the age of 50 years, the U.S. Preventative Task Force recommends that the decision to start regular biannual screening mammography before the age of 50 years should be an individual one and take patient context into account, including the patient's values regarding specific benefits and harms. This recommendation is a bit confusing to you, and you recall that there was some controversy around this recommendation. So you do some detective work and figure out that the recommendation was based off of a systematic review that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Before you read the article, you develop the following PICO question. In women between 40 and 50, do screening mammograms versus no mammograms reduce the risk of death from breast cancer? You track down the article that the, that the guideline was based on. A copy of the article is in Canvas. Feel free to read it now or refer back to it as we go through this video and the next few videos. Like every research article, we're going to go through the three steps of critical appraisal. In the next video, we'll focus on the first step. Are the results of the study valid?